Hello, I'm Terrapin, and I'm back to play some more Evil Hack while you watch on and make fun of my shortcomings. Um, I have been playing a lot of Illithid Priest recently, but I've decided to move on from that. Um, instead, I'm thinking I might try a rogue of some kind. Um, I don't. I've I've never been good at them, but uh, I think they're cool. Daggers are fun. I'm going to go with a Hobbit Rogue, um, both because a Hobbit is also a new evil hack race, so I think it might be cool to see that instead of a vanilla one. But also, I I think Hobbits probably make pretty good Rogues. I mean, both in like a gameplay immersion sense, but also I think they have a dagger multi-shot bonus. Um, and they have good dexterity. So uh, yeah, their dexterity is 20... Their constitution can up, get up to 20, so they're pretty tough as well. Strength is low. Um, I guess I'm at my limit right now. Uh, so I'll probably want gauntlets of power at some point. Um, intelligence is a bit low. Wisdom is high. Charisma is a bit low. Um, I actually don't know that much about hobbits. Um, they get hunger, intrinsic hunger, like you're wearing the ring, um, from turn one. Because, you know, they're hobbits and they always want to eat stuff. Uh, so, um, you always need to be looking around for food. Um, on the other hand, they start with a tinning kit, so stuff like poison resistance is easier to, to deal with. Um, they get, I th they might start with speed, or maybe they get it on level like three or four um, and they get searching at some point too um, oh they also start with the food sense intrinsic um, so they know whether things are safe to eat or not um, and you know they always have it so if you cast like skill detect food you can get it but it only lasts for one use um, you can see we've got two different altars on our first level and neither of them are our alignment so we got BUC identification down, but that's not it. Um, I'm actually going to stick with wielding my elven short sword. Uh, so this is an oddity with hobbits. I don't know if it qualifies as a bug or if it's an intended behavior. Um, maybe if you're like going for vegan conduct or something, this prompt could be useful. But um, the first time you ever eat a corpse as a hobbit, you're always told that the corpse smells foul, and you're asked if you want to eat it. Um, and and there's nothing wrong with the corpse. It just you've never eaten one before, apparently, so you don't recognize the smell. Um, and then after that, you won't be prompted again. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm going to be wielding my short sword. Um, in vanilla, I believe it's. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily common wisdom, but at least some people hold that you should wield a dagger instead because short swords are useless and um, you just want to get your skill in dagger as soon as you can. Uh, while it's certainly true that you want skill in dagger, um, short swords aren't bad either. Um, so I've never gotten far enough as a rogue to make use of this, but Fire and Frost by End are both steel short swords in Evil Hack. So, um, short sword is definitely a good skill to have. Um, more importantly, uh, hobbits are just really fragile. So, er, sorry, not hobbits, but rogues are pretty fragile, and um, there's a solid chance that I won't make it uh, if I rely on a subpar weapon like a dagger for normal melee. Anyway. Um, Although, now that I think of it, I could very well be relying on Sting. Um, cause, so, Sting, you can name it just like in vanilla from an elven dagger, which I start with being a hobbit. Um, let's throw some daggers just for the fun of it. Uh, so you can name Sting. Um, it's does it double damage to orcs, and you can sense them, and all that, just like in vanilla. So. It doesn't do bonus damage against other monsters per se, but um, it's a myth. It's made of mithril, 
um, an evil hack which um, has a plus two damage um, if it's if edge weapons do two more damage than normal if they're made of with mithril so um, it's sort of a it pseudo buff to sting I guess <laughs> indirectly um, another interesting fact well so um, other good reasons to get sting are I need to kill the goblin king at some point and uh, sting it is good against goblins um, also all of the banes in evil hack so the ones that are literally called banes like um, you know trolls bane and demon bane um, and then you know all, basically everything that hates a class of monsters so like Ogre Smasher to and Sting, um, which hates orcs. They all have a chance of insta-killing the class of monsters that they hate. Um, I think it's usually 5 or 10 percent. Um, I think 10 percent. So that's neat. Um, especially if you get it against the Goblin King. It can save you a lot of pain and suffering. Um, also, orcs hate mithril, so on top of the double damage that they do, I think it's double damage, um, on top of the double damage that Sting does against orcs, it also does extra damage as mithril against um, orcs. So, it's a real humdinger of a weapon if you really want to kill a lowercase o, which, as a matter of fact, you do early in the game. Um, the reason I'm not just naming it right away... Oh, and fi actually, there's a th another reason why um, naming Sting is good, and that's um, wishing and artifact gifting from sacrifice are no longer affected by artifacts that are named or generated. Um, wishing only takes into account um, artifacts that you've wished for before. So in vanilla, um, you're not guaranteed well, in both Vanilla and Evil, Evil Hack, you're not guaranteed to get an artifact if you wish for it. Um, but in Vanilla, the chances of getting it depend on how many artifacts exist in general. While in Evil Hack, it only depends on how many artifacts you've wished for in general. Um, and then Sacrifice in Evil Hack only depends on how many artifacts you've either wished for or gotten gifted to you. So Naming Sting won't affect that at all. Um, the only reason I'm not naming it immediately is because whenever you wish for or name an artifact, you have a chance of summoning some monsters that um, it's flavor that they're like guarding the artifact. So quest artifacts are guarded by quest leaders, um, or sometimes just random player monsters. Uh, or, no, sorry. It's always the quest leader, except for um, the... The platinum Indorian, I think, like the or the master of sorry, the master key of thievery. I think it might not always happen because the quest nemesis is the same as the quest leader for something else. I don't, I don't know. I don't really play Taurus to rogues, so I don't know exactly how it works. But um, anyway, sometimes you'll also get a player monster if it's um, not a quest artifact. Uh, and in the case of Sting and Orcrist, um, some elves will appear from the shadows. Again, this isn't guaranteed, but it's reasonably likely. And I don't think I could take on elves necessarily as a mere level 3. So, let me hang back for now. Um, I've heard a goblin war party on, the, on this level, so that means that the goblin town portals are around here. Um, and I'm going to go into it, if only, to eat a bunch of goblin corpses to satiate, well, probably I won't be able to literally satiate myself, but to um, lessen my hunger. Of course, traipsing around like this is not doing wonders for my hunger either, but uh, what can you do? Um, sometimes it says you hear a bustling town nearby, sometimes it says something about hearing it off in the distance. I have not been able to determine whether or not um, this actually 
takes into account how close you are to the portal, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. So I wouldn't rely on that. Um, getting all sorts of nice rings and amulets. Well, one of them is cursed, but regardless, I don't know if I want to wear any of them because I just I, I have no no food to spare. Come on, give me the portal. There we are. Um, oh, here's an interesting thing about rogues. Uh, they have a new skill called thievery, I think. Yeah, it's called thievery, and they start as basic in it. Um, if you are barehanded um, and you fight a monster with the capital F key, like so, you try to rob um, from the goblin, or from the monster you're fighting. So you just take something from their inventory. Um, if the monster is hostile, this is useless, because it's much faster to just kill them. Maybe if it's like a demon boss, it could possibly be worthwhile to rob them of something. I don't know. I th like, maybe if you're like fighting Orcus and you try to rob his weapon. You'd have to drop it, but he wouldn't wear it and he wouldn't wield it anymore. I don't know. Um but for the most part you just want to kill stuff fast instead. Uh but you can also rob peaceful monsters. Um you're never guaranteed to succeed and if you fail then you'll anger them. But you can get up pretty high. Um so depending on how um how comfortable you are with risk how comfortable you are with possibly having to murder a peaceful monster. Uh, you can steal stuff from like shopkeepers or even, you know, quest guardians or um, Catherine the Ice Queen if you're feeling really, really brave. Well, I guess you could steal stuff from her while she's still hostile. Um, so Catherine the... Um, I don't know. Yeah, Catherine the Ice Queen is um, a new boss that spawns in a new branch called the Ice Queen's Realm. And you find it just before Medusa. And uh, she is a really powerful spellcaster, um, including an Acid Blast spell. Um, and uh, there's some new spells that any monster can cast, but Catherine in particular um, is, is particularly relevant. Um, spells of elemental vulnerability, so you can be made, you can have your resistance to an element reduced by 50%, um, and the Ice Queen's Realm will do cold damage to you continuously unless you're cold resistant, um, but if Catherine makes you vulnerable, then you like have damage dealt to you all the time. Um, so she's she has a lot of, lots of different ways to kill you. Um, but, uh, so she's pretty scary, um, but she spawns with some neat equipment, um, a nice cloak, a nice amulet, um, even a, a nice athame, which, I mean, it's an athame, so that's nice, and it's also enchanted, and it um, does extra cold damage, so that would actually be a pretty cool find for a rogue, I guess. Um, anyway, um, when you kill her, she doesn't actually die, and she doesn't drop anything. Um, she just turns peaceful. So, the only way you can get her neat inventory, I guess, is robbing her as a rogue. Um, and I guess if you are confident in not dying in like three turns, then it might be worth it to steal stuff from her. I guess especially if... Um, so she can get a cloak of magic resistance, or an am and she always gets an amulet of reflection. So if you steal that stuff, then your um, choices, your options for dealing with her expand significantly. That's probably worth it, actually. But uh, yeah, other than that very, very niche corner case, um, robbery doesn't generally seem to be worth it. Plus, you gotta train it up. Um, certainly in the early game, I don't want to spend time doing that, because I have enough, a hard enough time just trying to kill monsters normally. Um, I have found a horn. 
Hopefully it's tooled. Um, it'll abuse my wisdom, but my wisdom is shit anyway, so um, I don't really care. Um, but more importantly, if it's tooled, it'll make monsters flee, and then I can backstab them. Um, so as soon as I find something worth testing that out on, I will. Hobbits are friends with gnomes, right? I think they are. Not dwarves, apparently. Um, does have a steel short sword, though. And dwarven short swords are better than elven ones, so I'll definitely want to bring that with me. Plus steel gives you a damage bonus, so... Uh, could be a useful hat. Probably not. Um, I need shoes, don't I? I guess I could use a cloak. I'm certainly not bringing a shield with me. Uh, yeah, I have a stone cap. Cool. So that's probably going to be better than the dwarvish thing. Although I guess I have plenty of carrying capacity. I'm too used to playing an Elfid. I don't need to ration everything. Except food, that I definitely need to ration. <sighs> I'm, I'm hoping for some... It might be silly to explore the gnomish mines, actually. Because if the gnomes are all peaceful, I can't kill them for their... to eat them, so... Oh, they're not peaceful. All right, good news. It's sapient eating time. Um, you should have the decency to drop a corpse when I kill you. A bag. Okay, this is looking promising. Um, it's because as a rogue, I start with a sack, so it's not that. Um, I have 629 inventory weight. If I put in um, 10 arrows, I have 624, so it's an uncursed holding bag. Um, yeah, so holding becomes much easier to identify with the inventory weight option, because you can just see how much weight you're carrying at any given time. Uh, that's cool. I mean, it wasn't that hard to identify anyway. And I like really like the inventory weight option. Um, I mean, I'm not encumbered yet, so for now I'm just going to be putting in stuff that I don't want in open inventory. And I'm going to tip my bag, uh, my sack, which I will not, no longer be needing, into my bag of holding, because why not? Um, I'm going to keep the sack around, just so I can put like cancellation ones or other dangerous things in there. Um, and if I find scroll, uh, scare monster, then I will put it in its own bag so that I can tip it out in an emergency and I won't have my entire bag of holding content stumble out on the floor. Um, that's a neat trick that I learned, I don't remember from who, but I was spectating some game and I saw that they had uh, they had put um, they had a second bag that they put Scare Monster in and I just shamelessly cribbed that. Okay, so this rock room is peaceful. I don't want to um, hit it by accident. Um, oh, I think I threw all my daggers, so now they're all stacking up with my alternate weapon again. Um, you can hashtag adjust a number of things to split a stack. So, that's cool. Um, I think if I... Can I pick this up? What if I put it in my bag? I'm still burdened. I think that putting a corpse in a bag of holding will... I'm pretty sure that'll keep it from coming out again. Um, keep it from reviving, which is definitely relevant to zombies. I might actually drop my bag of holding right now and just leave the corpses in it for a while. Um, because I don't need the holding bag in order to carry all my stuff. I don't actually know if this will work. It'll be interesting if it does. Or here, coins, scrolls, spell books, and potions, and rings, why not? Maybe I'll keep this one out. 
Um, yeah, so let's just see what happens, I guess. I should get a you feel less hassled message, I think, if it actually works. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it'll work, and even if it does, while the dev team thinks of a whole heck of a lot, they don't actually think of everything. So it's possible that no message would be given. I'm going to try to kill these mosquitoes from range because they have a poison attack. So that's pretty dangerous. Unfortunately, they don't have the decency to give poison resistance when you eat them. Okay. Actually, the short swords have an accuracy bonus. No, they don't. Daggers have a plus two, so actually I might wear one. Or wield one, sorry. To... Um, to fight off the mosquitoes, because they're small and hard to hit. Well, we've got ourselves some more zombies on our hands. That's something to watch out for. On a lit level, they're not nearly as much of a danger as they are on a level that's darker, has corridors. Uh, but yeah, I still would prefer them to just be dead. I do feel less hassled. All right. Um, I don't know if it's worth carting all of the zombies over. I might, though. Yeah, so one of the corpses is gone, the other's still there. Uh, these gnomes are both peaceful, okay. Good to know. Um, you might have noticed I've been eating a whole lot of corpses, and I'm still not satiated. Oh, got one. Um, hobbits have, like, a large stomach or something. So, uh, they can eat more than normal without, um, getting full and without choking. So, uh... I guess it's sort of useful for getting intrinsics if you, like, kill two dragons in succession or something. Um, but for the most part, you're too hungry to actually make use of it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna throw daggers. Rock moles are pretty hard to hit, so... Daggers have plus two accuracy, and I think they also might get a bonus to accuracy when you're throwing them. Don't quote me on that. Um, yeah, so... I should just name my dagger so they don't keep uh, merging. There we go. Once I name Sting, I won't have to worry about it anymore, but... I probably should wield it soon, actually. Or name it soon. Because... Level 5 is pretty decent. Yeah, I can't carry both without being stressed. I'm not really willing to do that. Um, honestly, I don't know if it's worth this much effort clearing the floor of zombies instead of just exploring the rest of the floor and leaving. But, uh... I mean, if I have to travel through here a lot, it's certainly better not to have zombies on the floor. And they can multiply. So, not literally, but um, if they kill other monsters, then those can revive as more zombies. I wonder what turn undead does to his undead corpses. I've never tried that. Like, they were already dead. You can't make them undead by making them zombies again or whatever. I guess you are making them just normal undead instead of un-dead. 
I don't know. It also feels like maybe they should be like scared or something. I mean, corpse can't be scared exactly, but normally you think of turn undead as damaging undead things. So it feels odd that it could resurrect them. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, I'm down to just two corpses in my bag. I haven't gotten any messages that I noticed since the first one. I might probably just miss them. Oh, I didn't untrap that arrow trap. I mean, that's probably wise of me in some sense. No, I did get some more hassled messages. I just didn't see them. Um, because I don't want to get poisoned by an arrow. But, uh, you can use arrow snake daggers, so, um... I'll definitely want them later in case they're good. Like well enchanted or whatever. Let's see. I can't remember if there's a way to um, mark peaceful monsters as different from hostile ones. If there is, I really need to get on that because it's a pain having to far look every time you're wondering. That's honestly, it's my main beef with characters that rely primarily on some sort of ranged attack. Is that you just have to spend so much time wondering if you're angering a monster, a peaceful monster or not. Like that one was coming right at me, you know? <laughs> I totally thought she was hostile until I checked. Probably the thing that I do that angers um, peaceful monsters the most is I'll knock them back, knock back an enemy I'm fighting into a peaceful monster. Um, I, I think you can do that in vanilla too. You can do like a staggering blow. Maybe that's just an evil hack thing. But as a monk, if you're skilled in martial arts, you can knock back and stun an enemy sometimes. Um, or jousting, that's definitely a vanilla thing. Jousting will knock back and out. Oh, shoot. Okay, I'm really low on HP. And he's back at full. Oh, yikes. Come on, switch places. All right. Luckily, I'm speedy. Um, it always has felt odd to me that rogues don't get speed naturally. Because, like, who, who could benefit more from it? More from speed than they... Actually, do they get speed naturally? Maybe I'm... They do, and I'm thinking of rangers. Um, either way, hobbits definitely do get speed, so I have it. Eh, maybe I should have just run. I definitely should have run. Okay, that was bad, bad of me. No, oh, I still got a corpse left. I'm gonna go for the other upstairs because um, I can't very well escape back downstairs with the dingo waiting for me. Oh, and as I say that, well, that's lovely. Oh, I have a... Uh, this will... I really need to check my inventory more often. I have a cur uncursed amulet of life saving on me. Okay. Um, that would have just been embarrassing if I died twice. Um, to, uh, due to not knowing what was in my inventory. Peaceful, peaceful. I shouldn't be wandering around because, you know, there's all sorts of traps in the mines. Um, I'm going to move up here for more visibility. Is this a statue or an actual cloud? Hmm. I can't rest with, like, multiple times at once while in view of the fog cloud. Plus, you know, it can attack me. I've lost some of my daggers fighting the dingo. Most of them, actually. And fog clouds can be surprisingly damaging, I feel like. What's their attack? Yeah, 1d6. That's not nothing. Plus, you know, you're engulfed. They have awful speed, obviously, so... That makes up for it. Oh, and that one just had no health. 
I'm searching as I walk because if if I walk into an arrow trap and die, that would just be embarrassing. Luckily, it wouldn't be a permanent death in this particular instance, but it doesn't mean I want to risk it. Um, while I am in the lucky position of having an amulet of life saving, uh, we might as well discuss how they work. Um, so in 3.6, right, um, Um, in 3.6, life saving just restores you to full health when you die, and you uh, it works regardless of BUC status and all that good stuff. Okay, so this dagger, uh, this mountain dwarf is now armed with daggers that it will throw at me, but I don't want to engage in it um, up close either, and I don't want to just leave it to pick up more stuff. So. Um, I'm going to throw some more daggers at it and hope to kill it. Of course, it's heavily armored, naturally. Um, oh, and there's the dingo again. Yikes. Do I have any wands? I do, but not any useful ones. It didn't engrave ID, so it's definitely not attack of any kind. Um, oh, I have my horn. Alrighty. Um, where was I? Right, so life saving. Um, it was nerfed in um, it was nerfed in three point seven to uh, It was nerfed in 3.7 so that it only restored up to 170 health. Um, depending on your constitution, it could restore quite a bit left, quite a bit less. Um, Evil Hack nerfed life saving in a different way. Um, I suspect that they like nerfed it first, or that Evil Hack nerfed it first, maybe, which is why I didn't implement the change. But I'm not certain. It might just be that the developer K2 thought that. Um, the vanilla nerf was bad for some reason. I don't know. Uh, but um, an evil hack, you always get 150, um, at least you, you get up to 150 HP restored uh, from the life saving. Um, but it will drain a point of constitution and it won't work if the amulet's cursed. So there's some trade-offs there. Um, you might have seen, I've noticed a gnomish wizard over, gnomish wizard over here. Um, they can fireball me and iceball me and just generally mess up my day. Um, so when I'm at low health, I don't want to go anywhere near them. Um, oh, I no longer have my bag of holding for now. I'm starting to get full up on items, but uh, I don't have that much more to explore. So I'd say on the whole, I think the whole bag of holding tro uh, zombie deal was was a good move. There's no much wizard. I think I glimpsed, glimpsed them coming over around this side. So I'm going to see if I can dodge around top and maybe get past them. Luckily, these zombies are still dead. I might quivering normal daggers. Well, I have more of them than elvish ones, so even though they don't quite do as much damage. I feel like I'm not hitting much. Um, my dexterity is good. Daggers are accurate weapons. I guess my strength isn't great, but it's not like bad either. Okay, pass the Gnomish Wizard. I um, can collect all my daggers again. I'm not sure if I'll have to fight the dingo. Yeah, that was to be expected, honestly. I'm going to leave that dart trap for now as well. Um, 
because you saw I killed that other dingo, but it was all the way over here. It seems like a far, far distance to travel. Um, so it might have just been a different dingo. Yep, it was. Um, should I dagger storm or short sword him? I will tooled horn him. I guess it makes sense that you scare peaceful monsters too. I'm glad it doesn't anger them. I wasn't sure about that, but I can really get behind this backstab business. Um, I don't know how bad the wisdom of use from the horn will be. I don't know if using it too much is going to be bad or not. Um, but it's so useful. I mean, it would be silly not to. Uh, actually, I'm just going to check. This is probably blocked. Yeah. So, until I kill the Goblin King, I can't go downstairs. Um, now I know. So I'll go back up, collect my, collect my now empty bag, which I have still not named. Which I should totally do. Yep, okay. Um, let's see, what do we put in? Most of our weapons. Except daggers, daggers, unwieldy weapons. Um, mithril broad short sword is a real nice find. Plus two damage from the mithril. Plus broad short sword is um, dwarver short swords are the highest quality out of that weapon type. Um, yeah. Oh, I don't need this lockpick. I can. In. Well, I'll keep them out for now, because that way, like, when I start getting encumbered, I have more stuff that I can put in holding, and it's like a kind of early warning that I might need to consider stashing things. Uh, going the wrong direction. Okay, so I'm going to curse test all this stuff. I have some armor that looks decent. Um, since I'm a hobbit and I start with a tinning kit, um, I actually have a pretty easy method of zombie oh, zombie disposal, which is uh, just tinning them. But considering this is a bright level where I'm not feeling too threatened by them, I might as well not waste the charges, I feel like. Honestly, I don't know if I've ever actually run out of charges on a tinning kit. I think maybe one time I did. In a, in a really long game, but I had the, the Enduring Express card on me, so it wasn't a big deal. Either way, it's very rare, but I'm one of those people who like hoards things to their detriment. Um, okay. Nice to see, lots of uncursed stuff. Anything interesting in here? Don't need this dagger. I'll definitely want the sword. Yeah, that's good. Um, drop D. Just. This is my new favorite weapon. Yeah, the starting weapons of a rogue aren't even like enchanted or anything, so. Definitely not worth keeping around. Um, I'll put it in my bag for now, because maybe when I start two weaponing, I'll use it. Um. <laughs> yeah. Um, gloves. Probably leather. I don't think any other gloves weigh ten. Um, gauntlets of protection, protection do, I believe, but, uh, they auto-identify because they provide extra AC, so... It's not them. Okay, um, I'm wearing stuff. I'll try this hard hat on. Um, but yeah, it's plus zero, so I prefer the stone skull cap. It's rust proof and lighter. Yeah. 
All right, let's go off to our next adventure. Um, did I find the Goblin Town portal? I think I did, All right? Yeah, anyway, um, now that I am high level, plus I have a bunch of iron daggers, uh, I'm feeling pretty comfortable in... I keep going this way when I try to get to the stairs, but it's, there's no pass over there. I'm feeling pretty comfortable in taking on elves. So I'm just going to get to a stair where I can escape if need be, and I'm going to name Sting. Um, actually, let's first just get rid of these names so I don't forget about that. And name inventory B. Sting. Huh, I didn't get a message. Normally you get a message about how like the elven dagger shimmers and or I don't remember the exact message, but it's something in morphs into mithril. Which as you can see it has done, but I didn't get any message about it. Um and I was lucky enough not to get any elves. Honestly, this time now now that I'm like feeling pretty prepared, I kinda would have preferred some elves for the sleep resistance. Um but Oh well. Uh, Goblin Town is here? Yeah, okay. Um, I'll switch to Sting so I can sense. Do go Hobbits have Infravision? I can't remember. Yeah, they do. Anyway. Boom. So yeah. Extra damage against Goblins plus um, extra Mithril damage. So Sting is just fantastic against goblin-y creatures, orcish creatures, whatever. Um, a mithril warhammer, I'll take it. Um, certainly not useful as an actual weapon, but um, it's nice to have it be as light as possible. I don't know it's possible. Shopkeeper, The shopkeeper would get angry if he saw me wielding sting. Honestly, it's possible he'll get angry if he sees me with Sting at all. So, um, I'm kind of curious, but I don't want to risk this run because it's going pretty well. So I'm going to put it in my bag, um, which should definitely be enough, I think. And it is not. Well, that's just brutal. <sighs> Am I good now? Please say I'm good. It's possible that my wand is locking, which would instantly solve my problem. It's more likely that it is not locking, in which case I'd waste a turn if I zapped it. Um, what's the speed of a shopkeeper? Oh, they're super fast. So I probably won't have time to close the door. And even if I run for it up this way, I'll almost certainly have a turn to... Uh, Zap sleep at me again. I'm pretty screwed. One time. Yeah, it didn't work. Okay. That was lucky. Okay, I'm gonna run. Oh, actually, that worked. I guess they won't follow you. Huh. Well, you live and learn. Thankfully, that would, uh, that amulet of life saving, man, glad I had it. So, yeah, I, I'll have to check the code. I've n I, I don't make a habit of wearing banes that much, wielding banes that much. Um, and most, most of them don't hate creatures that can spawn as shopkeepers or priests. Uh, but, yeah. Um, you can see I stabbed deep into the goblin's heart. That's the message you get when Sting, um, Sting insta-kills something. Which, you know, a measly goblin didn't really need to put in the effort, but... Uh, yeah. I mean, in theory, maybe it would work against the shopkeeper. That would be lucky. But it probably wouldn't, and it would also be murder, so... If I had had no other options, then maybe I would have tried that, but... Luckily, I could just run. Um, 
Yeah, I guess so. Just stay in his shop. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Yeah. I might put in some text later to explain it, um, like a little correction thing, if I figure it out. I don't even know where I begin to look. I mean, it's probably an artifact. Anyway, um, yeah. Well, despite all that excitement, I'm still feeling reasonably confident in uh, taking on the Goblin King, so that's going to be cool, I guess. I find it odd that you can stab... Well, I mean, I guess if you're stabbed in the heart, you could recoil. It just feels like maybe they should die before they recoil. But, you know, they can recoil as they die. There's nothing wrong with that. Luckily, I'm getting my fill of corpses here. It would be real nice if I had a pet that could kill all these prisoners for me. But I don't, so... I have to make do... Oh, I forgot to eat this corpse. I It might be rotten, but because I have food sense, yeah, it's probably tainted. But I was comfortable giving it a shot, since I'd know if it was a risk. Cobalt Shaman, you don't see one of those every day. Um, eh. This is the time that I can put my heavy stuff in my bag of holding. Oh, certainly don't want the potion out. Yep. Um. Okay. I'm kind of hoping to get to 100% dagger before I face the Goblin King. Just to get it that tiny bit more a tiny bonus from multi-shot. I mean, the bonus itself isn't tiny, but it probably won't add up to that much over time. Um, I'm going to tin this guy, because um, he can grant telepathy. Actually, I'm going to check that real quick. Um, like, total shamans don't currently grant telepathy, even though they're telepathic, which is fixed, but it, it's going to be fixed in the next version, but I don't know where... Yeah, corpse still conveys telepathy. Okay. So it's poisonous, um, but if I tin it, it'll be safe to eat. Um, yeah, actually, I'm going to switch to... I'll just fire the daggers, actually, because Mithril's doing a lot of damage, right? So if I use a less fearsome dagger, then I can get more hits in before they die. Oh, okay, I'm more confident now, anyway. Um, and while I'm here, I might as well eat the tin. Cool, telepathic now. Um, this orc shaman can also grant telepathy, but who knows whether... Yeah, it didn't leave a corpse this time, so glad I tinned that kobold. Just out of curiosity, um, there's a trapdoor that can spawn here to the second level of the branch. And... Sometimes if you, like, lure the Goblin King, um, if you have the Goblin King follow you down this way, and you damage him enough, he might run away and jump into the trapdoor if it's there. So, it's nice to know if it's there, so if he vanishes suddenly, you can be pretty certain where he's gone. I'm faster than him, so... Um, I probably could have d done this, um, right after getting to level 4 when I got my speed. But... Considering that whole shopkeeper fiasco, it's a real good thing I didn't. It's kind of a shame, because if he gets close enough that I'm using Sting against him, then he can probably kill me in just a couple of turns. So I want to avoid that. Which means that Sting is kind of useless. But of course I don't want to throw it away either, so... Although I do have a Mythful Short Sword as backup, which is probably doing... It probably does similar damage, honestly. Okay, he's dead. Um, now I can get into mine town. Um, and that's great. 
I have telepathy, so I actually could go down to the next level. Um, I'm feeling real lucky right now. <laughs> well, okay then. So much for that. But uh, yeah, after that shopkeeper thing. Oh, of course. Um, I believe the curse upon the result is the only. Um, it's the only outcome that can happen where um, you need strictly positive luck to get um, a better result. Um, every other result, you either just need non-negative luck, or there's a bit of a sliding scale where um, more luck is better. But uh, it curses items. Um, on one hand, Probably the only really important thing that was cursed is my Lumbus Wafer. Maybe if this Coral Ring was cursed, that would be a problem, but everything else I don't really care about. On the other hand, I'm a hobbit, so I need all the food I can get. Um, and so cursed comest comestibles are slightly more of an issue than normal. Um, yeah, okay. Well, my luck is all balanced out now. That's how I'm choosing to see it. Um, so I no longer have to worry about karma coming back to bite me. Um, as I was saying earlier, I have telepathy. So I might go down to the next, try to go down to the next level um, to see if I can find there's a cursed ring of invisibility that spawns. Um, it can either spawn up here, or it can the trap. There's a trap door, and that's the only way to get to the next level. It can be either here, here, yep, here. Um, so here, here. It can be at this square here. Um, it can be at some square here. I don't know. I can't reach it anyway. Or some square here. I also don't know. Um, So I'm just going to check over here, see if I fall in anywhere. Is that all the spots? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Um, probably not then. Yeah, there's a secret passageway up this way. Um, it's kind of a waste of a good secret passageway, because if you take it, um, you end up closer to the Goblin King. Uh, plus. There's a squeaky board, so you'll wake up the Goblin King. Um, so I can't imagine a character where you'd prefer to go that way over going up this way. I mean, I guess technically with the arrow trap here, if you're deathly afraid of poison to death, it would technically be better for you to go around this way. Um, but like, you, there are monsters, more monsters along this way, but they're weak, you know, they're goblins and goblin shamans. You actually want to face the goblin shaman in hopes that he'll give you telepathy. Uh, anyway, so it seems like the trapdoor is probably over here. Can't reach it. Oh well. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't. So short swords can be crafted with daggers and crossbow bolts, but I already have a really nice short sword, and I don't have any crossbow bolts anyway. So I don't think there's any reason for me to forge anything right now. Um, actually, now that I looked in my bag, I remembered I have a steel dwarvish short sword as well, which is better than my elvish short sword, so I'm never using that elvish one again. Just not necessary. I'm kind of surprised I haven't quite gotten this skilled yet in short sword. Um, okay. I think I'm going to go back to the gnomish mines, wherever those were. Not that way. Is there anything I really need to desperately be UC test right now? No, there is not. Um, so I'll just wait till my turn. Uh, 
Um, and we're back with our buddy, the zombie. Um, Tininkets are a real must-have. Uh, you can eat most zombies once you find a unicorn horn. But um, you obviously can't eat the ones of your own race unless you're an orc or a caveman. So um, a tinning kit is the only other reliable way to uh, get rid of zombie corpses. All the others are situational. And here we are in mine town. Um, lots of gnomish wizards, which isn't great. One of them's peaceful. Honestly, that's almost worse because I run the risk of angering one, the peaceful one by accident if I confuse them. Um, I have some non-flammable armor that's nice, and all my scrolls and potions and stuff are in my bag. So I'm not af too afraid of facing the wizards. Um. I think you can tell a lot about a player by how they face Gnomish Wizards. Because um, if you face them from afar, they can fire or ice ball you, and they'll destroy items and armor. If you face them up close, you'll probably be fine. Um, but there's a small chance that they'll stun you, and keep stunning you, and keep stunning you, until you're dead. Um, so. Are you the sort of player that will risk their life to protect their equipment? Or would you rather um, play it safe and possibly have to deal with uh, losing scrolls and potions and stuff? Plus range is just generally more annoying. Okay, I'm switching to my metal daggers for the brown pudding, because elvish daggers are made of wood and they'll rot. Um, and I'll eat the pudding, even though it's acidic, because it gives me a bit of resistances. Back to Elvish. This is the hostile wizard, so I'm going to take off my flammable stuff. Um, let's check what, I'm, what my loadout is. And just one more check to make sure this is actually the, the angry one. And now it's just a matter of staying out of touch range. Okay, then he's down. Um, okay, so I can put my stuff back on. Bop, bop. Bop. And still not a call lined altar, unfortunately. And luckily my ring wasn't cursed, so that's nice. Um, this cursed arrow here, oops, um, the F1. It might have been cursed by the throne, so it might actually be good. Actually, but once I price identify, I don't know if it's good. So I don't need to label it. Right. And my bag of holding will drop because there's probably some money I need stuff in there. Okay. Um, we've got some cats in here. And yeah, I have some food that I can throw on to make it a pet. Um, and then I can steal stuff from a shop if I want. So I'll probably do that, but first I just want to check out the shops and see what's available. And kill these scary shoulder ants. Oh, uh oh, poisoned arrows. That's not great. Okay, searching this thing so I can see where they are. Oh, and then the soldier ants are coming from the other side. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try to catch the orcs by surprise as they come around the corner. Okay, I don't want to hit this guardsman. Ah, double whammy. I wonder if horns... I don't think horns will anger guardsmen. Bugles will. Okay, great. Take that. 
Okay, soldier ant is down too. You can see this orc is riding on a warg. Um, evil hack monsters like to ride stuff. So I think there's actually poison arrows here, and I'm a little reluctant to allow them to pick them up. But it'll take a couple turns, even if they are there, for it to pick up the arrows and the bow and wield the bow. And actually it probably won't, since it's in melee range. Um, and if they do happen to have poison arrows on them, I don't want to step into the line of fire. Although I guess I am in the line of fire of this guy. This guy. But he's wielding a short sword, so I don't care. Oh, yikes. Okay, this dude on the warg, I mean, they will both be able to attack me. So I really would not prefer not to be so near. I think I'm going to horn him again. I'm, I'm really loving this tooled horn. Okay, I just need to get into my backstabs while I can. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to backstab the warg too. It's odd, I'm pretty sure wargs are actually a little slow. Oh no, they're just normal speed. So it seems odd that like a canine creature, a wolfish creature, a an uber wolfish creature actually, like they're supposed to be better than wolves, right? It seems odd to me that they're they're so slow. Plus, you know they're a mount, so okay, we've got a saddle with us here. I don't really have the weight to spare, even if I put it in holding. So I'll leave it there for now, but I'll not take this level. Can rogues even ride at all? Yeah, they can get basic. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll use that at some point. Come at me, bro. He definitely has the poisoned arrows. Um, I think if I stay within two squares of him, he will not wield his bow, possibly. Eh, I just want to know what I'm firing at. Okay, here we are. Just normal daggers. Alrighty. Oh, but now the warg's after me. But I'm faster than it, so... I don't care. Okay. Oh, zombie surprise. Okay, I just have so much stuff to deal with right now. I don't want the zombie on top of everything else, so I'm going to tin it. Um, and I mean, now that it's a tin, I might as well eat it, because I'm always hungry. Uh, that's useful. Silver's nice, poison's nice. I'm not poison resistance right now, so I gotta be a little careful, but... And... If I run back the other way, I might run into the mummy, and I have, like, none of my daggers on me. So I'm wondering if I should just stay and fight the morgue. Yeah, this isn't too bad. I mean, it's not great, but... Oh, and I'm still wielding, wielding stick, I should switch that. And tend the other gnome zombie corpse. And pick up all these poison arrows, and all my daggers. And this wand, which, thank god, was not used against me, whatever it is. And put some more stuff in my holding bag, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. Soldier ant for poison resistance. Put some more stuff in the bag of holding. Uh, I don't even know why I'm bringing this around, but I might as well sell it since I brought it this far. Uh, eggs. I'll put this in for now. I might as well put this in. Certainly don't want to put in the unid wand if it's cancellation. Wow, 150 weight exactly. Interesting. Um, I really want to eat these corpses because I'm a hungry, hungry hobbit. 
but I do not want the mummy to come up on me. Um, I think I've mentioned in a previous video my confusion with withering, um, and I looked it up after that, and I think I've got it figured out now. Um, so every turn that you're withering, you get one to two points of damage dealt to you. It's split evenly. Um, it, it, there's an even chance of one or two. And then if you have regeneration, that is... Um, that amount is... Uh, you take one away from that, so it just becomes zero or one. And you get the dealt that amount of damage. Um, and then also, as long as you're withering, you can't regenerate health. So really, the subtracting one from regeneration is more like regeneration still works. I don't know. Uh, anyway, um, and then if... So, whatever the attack is... So, like, a giant mummy... Um, they do a th they have a 3d4 claw um, uh, withering, so they deal uh, one to twelve turns of withering. Except actually, the minimum amount of turns you can get dealt withering is two. Or sorry, but this is a 3d4 anyway. So three d three to twelve withering turns. Um, and if they give you more than eight turns of withering at once, then they also drain a point of maximum health. Um, so. For all of the mummies that can deal more than eight, so orc mummies are fine, but like the giant mummies, some of the others, human mummy? That's a thing, right? Yeah, I can deal 2d4, so you want to avoid those immediately if you can, because melee if you can, because um, they can drain health from you, maximum health from you. It's just a point at a time, but... You need all the health you can get, especially an evil hack. Um, I'm just going to casually deface this temple real quick. Oops. Um, accidentally went full screen for a second. Uh, I'm in the middle of engraving with a wand, so I don't think I'm back out quite yet. Yes, I want to engrave at an X. And then control R redraws the screen, makes everything happy again. Um, so, I assume from that that it just wasn't ID'd. I hope there was no particular weirdness with um, the display going weird because of the full screen moment. But it's probably just unidentified. Um, I feel like there's a general store around here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Uh, actually, I'm going to go to the hardware store first. Is this a chest? No, it's not a chest. I was hoping for a chest so I could lock the poison arrows in there. Because I'm not going to use them. But I don't want them around either. Um, towel is 89. That means we've got a times uh, 16 ninth situation here. Um, 80 over 45. I don't know the fig that figure quite as easily. Yeah, that's also times... Oh, shoot. That was not great. I mean, I had no idea that was a Mimic. And I totally would have gone to that square to immediately pick up the towel so I could sense Mimics later. I can't really blame myself for this. Other than being, you know, I'm trapped on this side, but on the other hand, also... I'm, it's sticky, so I couldn't escape anyway. Luckily, I got myself a tooled horn, which is just just amazing. I'm just I'm just loving this tooled horn. Uh, I've never played a character that's gotten a tooled horn at a time when they need it so much. Like when I find a tooled horn, I'll bring it with me just for the express purpose of scaring monsters. But most of the time. By the time I have it, I I have other ways of escaping. Um, so um, I'm not entirely sure what the deal is with zombie, zombies and shopkeepers. Like you'd think, 
you'd think that the shopkeeper would try to kill him, but it might be that they don't for some reason. Um, I, s I could swear I've seen shopkeepers fight zombies before, but lately I've not really seen it happen. Okay, this normal lord, oh, it's peaceful. It just wants to fight the zombies. So I'm not going to anger it. need to be firing one dagger anymore because the goblins moved. I don't know. Uh, I know I'm very slightly overweight. I'm I'm really I'm on a tinning zombies kick right now. I just I just don't want to deal with them. Oh and there's another one on there. The holding trick was neat while it lasted, but uh now that I'm actually relying on the holding bag to keep me unencumbered. On the other hand, I'm down to 26 tinning charges, which is like actually kind of low. I'm sure I'll find more tinning kits later, but who knows exactly when. I think I'm going to try to stop tinning zombies for now. I don't regret that, though. There's such pain. Um, just to get me unencumbered, let's dump a bunch of stuff in my bag again. Let's keep this soldier ant meat out. I should eat that immediately. There's no reason not to. Um, and I'm gonna wield a dagger so I can open up the tin easily. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. One thing that amuses me is you get told that corpses could be rotten, but only after you've eaten some of them and found out that they're rotten. And it's like, yeah, thanks for the warning. Um, it, it might be that it's just a time passing thing in that when you pass out, it allows you to, uh, it time passes and then the corpse is then certainly rotten instead of only maybe rotten. I don't know, but it's amusing to me anyway. More rotten food. Today's not my day. Um, so I'm going to go on a price identification spree in a second with all my uh, all the weapons I have in my bag of holding, as well as you know the few scrolls and potions that I've collected. But I think I'm going to end the video here. Um, that way, if you're not interested in price identification, I don't blame you. It's boring. You can just like skip the first few minutes of the next video. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was enjoyable. It was certainly pretty exciting with the life saving and the, the whole work shopkeeper getting mad at me thing. Anyway, see you around. Bye.